Hello and welcome to the Tarkus Zone. Thank you for joining me. We're looking at my uh, smart travel bike today. I've been featuring this bike on my channel going all the way back to early July when I had the uh, bike drop shipped to my house. Now you can buy this bike on Amazon. I think it's around $1,500. They will mail it to your house. And then you just have to take it out of the box and put a few things on. One of the things you had to put on was the front wheel, the front light. It was really simple stuff. You had to put the uh, kickstand on, you had to put the pedals on, really simple stuff. Really wasn't hard to put together. I think I had it together in under 20 minutes by myself, as long as you follow the instructions. And I have an instructions uh, video on my YouTube channel that you can check in the playlist, my uh, smart travel playlist and you'll be able to uh, uh, figure out how to put it together. So I do want to talk about a few things about the bike. I just hit a thousand miles, uh, 1,000.3. And I'm here at Donaldson Park again. We've been at this uh, park before when I've done other videos. I'm underneath the pavilion. And I just want to talk about the bike in general and some of the comments that I have received uh, on my YouTube channel of people who did not like this bike, their, their uh, concerns stem from the fact that the seat's not adjustable. The bike on the website says you should be over 5'5 five five to uh, ride the thing, to sit comfortably on it. If you're under that height, 5'5, five five, then you're gonna have to like jump up on the thing. So they tell you that right off the bat. The other thing is they said that the seat wasn't comfortable. I've had no issues with the seat. There is a screw in the back of the seat that allows you to move the seat this way, forward or back, if that's what you need to do to uh, adjust it to, to make it feel better for you. I do know that they've come out with a, uh, an, a model of this bike with a, they say a new redesigned seat. So maybe the new model, I think the new model's uh, $1,600 or $1,700. You'll have to look that up on Amazon yourself. The other, concern people had with the bike was the handlebars weren't adjustable and I find the handlebars perfect for me I'm six foot one and I find the handlebars to be in the perfect location now if if you were to bring the handlebars up your body would you know hit the wind more so I think that to me the handlebars being low is an asset to the bike it forces you to hunch over a little bit so you don't get wind drag on your torso so, I mean, those are the couple things that people complained about the bike. Now, the bike description on the website says the bike will go up to 34 miles an hour. Now, that's where the speedometer that they give you with the bike caps out at 34. It will never go higher than 34 miles an hour. I have a GPS tracking app on my phone that I use to do my tracking of how much bicycling I'm doing because I've been doing 99% pedal. So I pedal this bike on Pedal Assist 5. With that said, this bike has got up to 52 miles an hour. My GPS tracking app has told me multiple times when I've looked at the max speed, low speed, average speed of the GPS tracker, that 52 miles an hour is the highest speed that I have achieved with this bike. And that's a couple hills here in Grand Isle on Route 2 where I've achieved that. So this bike goes quite fast, even though the speedometer tells you it's capping out at 34 miles an hour. Now do keep in mind that if you're gonna run this bike in your state or in your community, always follow the safety speed limits. So don't go 50 miles an hour in a 25 zone. That's just stupidity. And I imagine you get ticketed for that. You'll notice that I got these extra lights. It's getting dark here in Grand Isle. So I've got these extra lights that just keep uh, traffic to see me. On the back of my helmet, I've got a light that's blinking. So let's talk about helmets. I would suggest if you want to be the safest person on this bike is to get a motorcycle helmet. I'm just using a, a bicycle helmet because that's where I feel I feel comfortable with this thing. I have a motorcycle endorsement. I have a motorcycle. You've seen it in my other videos. I own multiple motorcycle helmets. It's just that when I'm exercising and I'm pedaling and I'm doing 50, 60 miles in one trip, then the motorcycle helmet just gets too sweaty. It's too heavy for me. So I go with just a bicycle helmet, but I would suggest you getting a robust, good safety helmet 
for this bike, especially if you think you're going to be hitting the 50 mile an hour mark on some, you know, depending on what hills you, you get. Now let's talk about the battery life. Now I got two batteries for this bike. I have a, a backup battery. Those are $350 a piece on Amazon. You'll find them on the Amazon website under the smart travel category, 350 bucks. You get a second battery that allows me if I'm on pedal assist five, meaning that it's giving it the most, you're getting the most uh, speed out of the bike. I'm getting about 40 miles, I'd say, before the battery's dead. But then I can just go back to my house and slap the other battery in and, and I'm on my way to do another 35 to 40 miles. So that's 80 miles that I could do on, a, on, on two batteries. Now, if you run the bike on a lower pedal assist, like a pedal assist one, two, three, four, you can lower the pedal assist, it's just this one button here. And on pedal assist one, you'll get the maximum amount of distance, but you're not gonna go that fast. I think nine miles an hour is as fast as you're gonna be able to go with it. And you're gonna be working for it because it's only one gear. There's no, this is not a, uh multiple gear bike it's one gear it's got a throttle here so you could actually just sit on the bike and throttle it like a motorcycle and never pedal at all and it will just take you where you want to go i pedal so that i can get the exercise and i can get more uh battery life out of it so i can go further on my trips but if you were just running the bike with your feet on the pedals but not pedaling and then running it at pedal assist five maximum speed and just running the throttle you're only going to get 25 maybe 30 miles out of the bike before the battery's dead so that's a trade-off if you want to do some work and pedal you'll get more distance out of each battery i have noticed though as it's getting cold and it has been getting cold in my climate it's vermont that the battery is not lasting as long so like i've only gone out here i maybe done three miles and the battery's already down after only going three miles. I just came out here to do enough miles to cap me over the thousand so I could do this video. So the batteries, when they're cold, don't seem to last that long. And I've noticed it when I've done my night riding when it's like 45 degrees out, I'm not going as far because the batteries are cold. Now I imagine you can bring the batteries in your house before you use them, warm them up. I just charge my bike on the deck outside. So it is what it is, you know, it, you just, that's the way battery technology works, right? I mean, when batteries are cold, they're not gonna give you the best bang for your buck. The, the tail light is bright. The front light is bright, as you can see. The directionals, I have already said multiple times, I don't like the directionals on this bike, but I'll turn them on anyway for you. There's a, there's a right directional. You can see it here. Oh, this is the left directional, sorry. So there's the left directional. There's the left directional on that. The problem with the, uh, with the bike is it doesn't have an auto shut off on the directional. So if it's in the middle of the daytime, you might be leaving the directional on and you might not realize it because there's no auto shut off. For like motorcycles, there's an auto shut off. Like my motorcycle, when I turn the corner, there's some sort of probably mercury switch or a, a, a float switch that tells me I made the turn, it shuts the directional off. This bike does not have that. So the directionals are kind of like, you gotta watch what you're doing with them so you don't leave them on. Now, the other big concern I had with the bike when it was really wet out, that the brakes squealed a little bit. Since it's been drier, I have not been getting this squealing, but I have been getting noise out of the gearbox. The other day I took it mudding and after I took it mudding, I now get a sound coming out of this gearbox. I am hoping, and I've looked at it a couple times, this is some, I could take this wheel off and there's like eight screws that hold this together. I'm thinking, oh, this winter, I'll take the, the tire off, take those screws out and see if I got to re-grease it or repack it. Because it's definitely, I'm going to do it. I'm going to lean this thing up on the, on the, on the uh, kickstand. I'm just going to throttle it. You can hear it. It wasn't making that noise a week ago. It wasn't making that noise. And it was only after I went mudding with it. And it doesn't make the noise while it's just turning. It's only when I'm applying the pedal assist or the throttle. So it's definitely in the gearbox. You can hear it. 
and it will go away. Once I get the bike up to like 20 miles an hour, the noise goes away. But when it comes out of the gate, when you're just starting off, it makes the noise. And as you can see, you can't hear, or you can't hear the noise while it's just turning. So it's not, a, not an issue with a spoke being out of alignment or the tire itself being out of alignment. It's actual gearbox. I think I'm gonna have to repack it with grease, which I mean, I got a thousand miles and I've put this thing through heavy, heavy wear conditions like deep water, thick, thick mud. I've ridden it all summer in the rain. I mean, this thing, I have put it through its paces, almost like I'm trying to destroy it. But here we are. Um, I got my neighbor here revving his motorcycle. He's just doing, he's just been going back and forth. Right? I don't know if you can hear it or not, but he's just revving it. I think he sees me out here uh, making a uh, video on my bicycle and he's feeling it's necessary to show me up with his loud motorcycle. I, I don't know. He's just, he's almost like trolling me out here now because he's made like three circuits around me with the noisy bike. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I definitely can hear it. So here we are. I mean, the bike. I still recommend it. I'm going to look into the packing, the grease packing. As for the brakes, those are still running fine. I, they were, like I said, they were squealing a little bit when they were wet, but you know, that happens, but I've looked at them. They don't need to be replaced. So other than this back noise off the gearbox, everything else is to my liking. It, it's, it's worked great. And even if the gearbox blew up today, I think I'd got my money's worth out of this bike. A thousand miles since July is what I put on this bike. Here he comes again. You can probably hear him. <laughs> He's now revving the thing up the road here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> whatever, you know. People want to do their own thing because if he finds that to be fun, then let him, let him be at it. You know what I mean? All right. So I hope I uh, answered some questions or, or some concerns people had just talking about the bike and as being a person who's ridden the bike, I, I recommend it still. I will be updating my uh, YouTube channel on my travels with this bike through snowy and slushy conditions during salt conditions. Cause in Vermont, we're going to get snow. We're going to get, we're going to get the whole gamut of mother nature in the next few months. So I'll be out and about, I'll probably repack that gearbox. I might actually just talk to the local, bike shop down the road and see if they'd be willing to repack that gearbox for me. I mean, I guess that that might be just what it is. It just needs a little grease because, you know, it's gone through its paces, through mud. Uh, I mean, I can't just, I make it a list a bunch of things that I've done with this bike that people would see, say that I was insane. But I like riding insane stuff and I like doing insane things. So here we are. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. And this has been the Tarkus Zone.